attack on American office is an act of war. I need him back right now. I'm gonna give you some advice. You ready? Stop. Can you hear me? Stop. This is nothing personal, man. I'm just doing my job. It's doing mine. I heard there was a little unfortunate incident on the highway. A little incident? I would really hate for it to happen, Ken. Are you threatening me? We'll do this however you want to do it. You're gonna keep coming to me until you tell us all? Yeah. That's a weird fucking game, but okay. I'll play. You have home court advantage. You have a larger team. Unlimited resources due to the support of a phenomenally corrupt government willing to kill innocent citizens, plus a local special forces which we designed and trained and built for you. So let's not forget about your absolutely medieval moral compass and nasty thirst of bloodshed, for which there has been no legal repercussion because you do not operate under any rule of law. You're chaos. That's right, Jim. But you know what? What's that, Jim? I think I might just be a little worse. Military police. Sir, I need you to drop your weapon. Now, place your hands behind your head. I, your now. My identification's in my right front pocket. Will you just check it? Just check. Uh. MacGyver's. You want to get out of here? Go. These are the Manos Sangrientas. If you want to get close to El Noche, you got to know the other players involved. It's time for you to call your people. There's plenty of territory to go around. We just want to split. And you don't want a war. Their bounty mark is on them. of trouble. Not sure our battle angel can get out of this one. Where are you? Headed to the old church. I've, I've never, never seen, seen anything like this. Clippers. My Baron will have your head for this. My head. Machete kills. What's that cohete? It's about goddamn time. I know you. you Machete. Enemy of the cartels. It's my lucky day. A man who kills a legend becomes a legend himself. Forty commandos breached the gate, 20 in the left. So joining me today is Hollywood superstar Sam Medina. Sam is a multi-talented actor, stuntman, producer, director, and screenwriter. He has been featured in 80 movies, TV shows such as Mile 22, Venom, Alita, Savages, Reminiscence, Olympus Has Fallen, Kickbox of Vengeance, Retaliation, and The 22 Unforgotten Soldier, just to name a few movies. And he's got such an impressive catalog on IMDb, we'll be here for about a day if I read them all out. So I just wanted to go through a bit of a summary. Um, he has worked with legendary directors such as Oliver Stone, Robert Rodriguez, James Cameron, Antonio Fuqua, Martin Campbell, Edward Zwick, uh, Peter Berg, and the late Tony Scott, to name a few of those directors that people can relate to. Welcome to the show, Sam.
Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man, that's an impressive, um, you know, there's so many different things and I was like, I'm just going to get the key ones out of there and, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that those, uh, those legendary directors definitely um, have their imprints on me and what I do and how I do it. Yeah. Now, you worked with um, Mark Wahlberg on Mile 22. You yeah. were the main, well, second main villain in a sense in yeah. that movie. Yeah. How was that? Oh, fantastic. I mean, uh, Mark is such an amazing actor and scene partner, you know. I mean, we feed off each other. And that's really what got the scenes where it were. And Peter Berg, the way he, he works, man, he's so fast. I thought I've worked with some of the fastest uh, directors, but he's by far the fastest. Yeah. And I learned so much being with him four months off and on that when we did 22 and we were doing dough now yep. with uh, one or two people crew. I mean, this is a true story of a rebel with our Hollywood crew. And that's why we're here. It's true, man. It's, inc it's incredible. And we'll get to that. That's why they mentioned dough. I want to just put a lot of focus on that towards the end. Yeah. And really get the audience to really understand what you're building and, you know, what we're putting together and what it's going to look like. It's going to be sensational. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite movies is Savages. Yeah. And you're, you're one of the actors in that movie. And I think that was a sensational movie. You know, I watched that about three, four times and um, you play that bad guy so, so well, you know. <laughs> this is my bread and butter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it's, it's, I have such an incredible story for that and how I met to be able to come work with Oliver Stone, you know, and yep. we did this thing where I did a previous uh, for some fight sequences. And, you know, when I found out I was doing the action for Benicio Del Toro, yeah, one of my legend. favorite actors, right? And then um, Oliver Stone looked at the video and said, like, who, who is this kid? I want him in my movie. And that is how I end up being one of the Latino gangbanger in, in, in um, Savages yeah. and work with Salma Hayek. I mean, you name it, it's, everybody's in there. So yeah, it's, it was such an amazing opportunity to see him work. I mean, Oliver Stone was right here to my face. Yeah, wow. You know, you don't get any more education than that. Yeah. You know, any closer than that. He gave me one of the most uh, amazing compliment. He says, it's all in the eyes. You got it, buddy. I wish I could bring you back in the film, but I already killed you. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the challenge with the bad guys. They, they get killed off one way or another, right? All the so time, there's... all the time. And I got, I got yeah. Sean Bean beat. Okay, yeah. And when I worked with Sean Bean, he killed me. He had Jake Busey kill me. So I won out of that battle right yeah, now yeah. between me and Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. No as long doubt. as you don't get killed off in the first five seconds of the movie, it's fine. And you don't with your roles. But you see a lot of actors, they bring them in just from a title, yeah. just from a name. Yeah. And then within 20, 30 seconds or whatever, you know, not that short, but they, they pretty much kill them off pretty quickly. Well, sometimes they just need the name and the cameo. And I yeah. think that, you know, sometimes you come in, you play long, sometimes you play short. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, you have these opportunities to where you can make yourself and the character you portray very memorable doesn't matter if it's one second or uh, you know 10 minutes it's what you do with the character yeah. and then that's how people are going to remember you yeah and now, i think that's what it's about now you said a lot of these legendary directors they're on the ground so they're they're behind the cameras they're they're very they're directing they're guiding they're they're very hands-on oh yeah no doubt man i mean yeah. the, all the people that i've been able to deal with they're very hands-on and they're very direct to what they want. They know what they want. They want the tempo. They want the pacing. They know exactly what they want to pull out of you. And that helps a lot for actors because sometimes maybe you don't have the same interpretation that yeah. they do. And so therefore it's up to you, do what you can, trust in the directors that you work with and then let them guide you. I think that that's the most important part is to let them be the person who guides you and direct you and mold you and steer you. Yep. and then see where it goes because many things can change by the time you get to the edit room and so having that trust working relationship with a director is important and i've been blessed to where the legendary directors that i've been blessed to work with i mean their resume speak for itself yeah so all the trust and all the hands go off to them and from them i'm able to learn to do what i do now you know with one two you see here yep. uh two people crew Yep. And we do everything before, and this is what we have here. Yeah, it's incredible. You know? It's incredible. Now, you were born in Vietnam, correct? Yes. Okay. And then you came to the U.S.? Yes. How long ago? Oh, I'm going to tell my age now. Yeah. Uh, just, ball, just ballpark it. You know? Over 30 years. Okay, cool. Uh, I've been here. Uh, I, I don't look like your normal Vietnamese. I'm mixed, um, you know, with Spanish and also Polynesian. 
okay, mix wow. with with um fourteen percent of that. Yep. And so it's a mixed up mud everywhere. You know, grandfather or grandmother was mixed with French because the French invaded Vietnam before, you know, the Vietnam War. Okay. Wow, so I'm kind know. of a mixed up mud all over the places. Yeah. You change my hair, you change my facial hair, I become yeah. A different totally character different, yeah. you never So you can mold into different characters. And I think that's where a lot of these guys put you in these movies is because you're so um, adaptive to that stuff. You know? I can, I can. Yeah. And I think the only thing that I don't do is I don't do what Channing Tatum or Brian yeah. Gosling does. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not the rom-com guy. Yeah, no, no, I you get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't yeah. get the girl at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. I mean, I look like I would really do something bad things for the for the, for the grooming, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, now, with Tom Hardy on Venom, you worked with as well. Yes. So you spent a fair bit of time and... Oh, man. You know, what can I say about Tom? He's one of my favorite actors. And when the call came in, and my agent didn't know what it was. Because originally, it was um, titled Antidote. Okay. And I already knew, what is, what, why do you need Antidote yep. when you get bit by Venom? Yes. So I did my research, which a lot of actors, they don't do research. Uh, my research, and I'm like, oh, wait, Tom Hardy plays the character. Yep, yep. So I told my agent, I said, look, it doesn't matter what it is. I want to work with Tom Hardy on set. And I didn't realize, but I had really one of the most memorable scenes from the movie to this day. Uh, the beginning scene and kind of like the near the end scene of, of what Venom did to me. So I'm sure you guys have seen <laughs> what happened. Yeah, what was my fate? You watch it. Yep, yep, you know what I mean? Yep. One, of my, one of my most memorable deaths. I, I must say, and when I met Tom, you know, I was letting him know, hey, man, look, um, I, I'm a really big fan for a long time. I, you know, can you sign, you know, my DVDs? And he ran outside with me and he said, yeah, let, let's sign it now. So I opened up my school bag yeah, well. and all the DVDs in yeah. there. And, and he was just shocked. I said, man, I told you, like, I've been a long time yeah. fan. And he, he respected me a lot because I asked him about a movie that nobody ever have seen him in. Huh. And, and and that's one of the reasons why he realized, okay, he's not just saying these blockbuster films that I've yep. done with him, but the film when he was at a star. So, you know, and then when we saw each other again at the red carpet premiere, it was such family and love and everybody was like, yo, you just like, dude, I'm like, listen, Tom is cool, man. Yeah. He's so cool. Uh, that is is unbelievable. So I can't wait to step into the ring where it's my turn to direct a Tom Hardy. Yeah, so that's that's in the future, you know. What got you into directing? What? How did you? What's your transition from actor to get into directing? I wanted more. Okay. I find that as actors, sometimes we in, we out, we play, and and for me, you know, I, I felt a little bit unfulfilled. I, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not really part of the team who's cooking yep. the dish, and because of the resume with all the legendary directors, it's like, hey, I think. If you reflect on it, you realize that you're meant to do this. And it started with that. And I love being behind the camera. I love filming. I love going back. I love editing. I love to put the color grading, the sound, yep. the mixing, you name it. I love that part of it so much where, yes, I love to be the bad guys and I do my thing. You know, that's my sticks. But being behind and get grabbing the camera and filming and do all this stuff. And then I show you, hey, press play. To me, that's what I love even more. So directing was inevitable for me, right? But it still took a journey of learning. You know, the last four years since we worked on two films together yeah. uh, is a learning process always, but you have to be willing to learn and adapt. And I think that that's the key is that you can never stop learning. And, and that's how we're able to do what we do with, you know, what you're looking at here. But the resources we have, I mean, you see, we don't need anything from yeah. A through Z. Yeah. We deliver. Yeah. And that's really my focus now, I think, for the next five years is just to create. But then give back to other people that might not have been able to get in front of the camera. And because I've been behind the camera, in front of the camera, it's very easy for me to mold my other actors into yeah. something where they're going to be proud of. Yeah. yeah. Now, your first movie that you did, 22, The Unforgotten Soldier. So... Where was the where the vision come from for that movie? That movie, for me, was a personal love um, that I wanted to give back to the veterans. I find myself very blessed to be in this country, uh, to come from a kid from Vietnam all the way to Hollywood. And that is a story in itself. Right? That's a part of my biography. 
And to be able to do this and we do what we do, what we love, when other men and women who are out there fighting and protecting us and our safety. And so 22 was a very love personal project that I wanted to give back to all our veterans. And plus my, 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 one of my dear friends, Chuck, who plays Charles um, in the film, he's the Vietnam War vet. So the story was really built around him because of my 16 years friendship with him, brotherhood, family, when he was always telling me about what happened to him in, in the Vietnam War and when he come back. And that really stemmed from that. And the name 22 is because that's the average uh, suicide committed by our veterans uh, daily. And I'm sure it's higher now after COVID, after all the things are shut down. So that's a personal love project, you know, that, that I had to get it out first. And that was your first feature film? Yes, that was yeah. my directorial feature film. It was daunting. Um, I don't think I'll ever go back to directing and starring in a very emotional state of mind character. Yeah. It was extremely tough. I, I believe I'm still dealing with that now, physically, mentally, emotionally, you name it. It's been four years and it is still here. Yeah, wow. And so, no, I, I took a step back this time. This time is to launch the the the, the female version of, you know, action thriller film. Yeah. And I'm just behind the scene. I'm making a cameo like you and, and all my other buddies uh, come along and they'll be included in, in this next segment that we're going to do. Excellent. So if anyone hasn't watched 22, The Unforgotten Soldier, it's on Amazon in the US. Yes. Um, so definitely watch it. That's Sam's first project. And the second one, I'll get you to, it's called Doe. So what's the concept behind Doe? Doe is dead on entry. Everyone who comes in and enters, they die. Simple as yep. that. It's about a story of a female who got blamed for murders that she didn't commit. So now she has to set out to clear her name. And, you know, on the way you find out who she really is and what she's done and where she came from. And um, I think you're gonna be in for a treat. The audience is gonna be in for a treat because you have never seen a female version of Jason Bourne, John Wick, you know, uh, uh, Liam Neeson uh, um, in, in Taken or even, you know, Salt. I mean, I love the, yeah. the, the film Salt. And I think that this is the next uh, franchise that we're doing and I think that I'm so excited that the audience is going to see a different version of it you know there are many people that say they take Krav Maga yep and then there are people when you see they do it that's Krav Maga it is completely different and this is based upon a lot with the lead character she was military you know she was special op she's been a lot and she's been around the world a lot of the things are based upon what she's been in uh, and, and then her experience and so I think that you guys are in for a treat. You got to see oh, the yeah. montage. Oh. Yeah, I've been fortunate and grateful for the last couple of days to spend some time with you and you show me behind the scenes and, you know, a lot of the different footage as well that you've got there and, you know, some of the locations that you're filming in. And I saw a bit of that teaser, or let's say we call it a pre-teaser and incredible. I mean, it just grabs you straight away. You know, the, the action, like you said, that's real. Krav Maga and even the audio. I mean, the lighting, the cinematography, I mean, Wow, man, you've really got an eye for this. You're very talented from a director point of view. And like you said, it's a very small team and you're pretty much wearing all the hats, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and you're acting in it and you're directing, you're doing so many different roles. And um, I love the movie. I mean, Thank it's, you. it's not fully finished yet, but even from what's been completed, just the energy's there, it just grabs you, it hooks you and you just, you're fixated. And look, this is my opinion, right? I know from a trailer or in the first 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, you watch something, you get a good indicator if it's good or bad, right. no matter what the uh, actor is, right? right? Some movies, they just put an actor in just to sell the movie or whatever it is, because that's what it is. Right. But then this is a passion project. This is a lot of effort. You can see that, you know, the, the lighting and all the different elements. When people watch this movie, they're going to get blown away. I think and, they're not ready. I think this is the not. new day and age of the Robert Rodriguez yeah. of a one man crew. And, uh, our actors in the film, their crew, example today, yep. Yep. Uh, you know, even you and I. Yep. And so it's the new day and age because after COVID, after the streaming wars happened and there's no more really a list uh, that bring people into the theater seats, right? Yep. So now it's all about streaming. And so how do you uh, streamline your factory and your work uh, to be able to deliver the best products at the least expensive 
uh, budget there is and, and not balloon the budget up to 200 million, 100 million, and you're not getting the same thing. And I think this is what the audience are going to find out that what we're able to do on the level of $20, $30 million movie, the way it looks yep. versus how much we actually uh, spend the time and money to do a lot of more time, a lot of more sweat, blood, sweat, and tears, yep. uh, no doubt. But it's the passion, like you said, it's oh, the yeah. love and the passion and you see it. And it's no nonsense, you know, no one, no one in the film is just playing around. This is seriousness. And so when, when, when the camera rolls and when from the film from start to finish, you're going to be in for a, a ride of a lifetime that you normally would get from a bigger studio, yeah. uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you know, all these uh, yeah. Warner Brothers, yeah. you know, you know, Marvels and all this stuff, you know. So that's what we're, we're, we're here and we appreciate you along with all the other people that I will be mentioning in the, the segments who came along, who believed in the vision. Without you guys believing in the vision, I only have these images in my head, right? With the wife being the lead actor, the star, yeah. without her doing the 40 people job in the office, I couldn't yell action. All the team that we have, and our team literally of uh, five people or less. A lot of time, it's just me, my backpack. We rolled in, they're actors, we roll in, we get our stuff what we need, and that's how it's been the last two years. And that's why there's the film, yep. and there's going to be the documentary. That doc, there's going to be the documentary behind it, yep. and to show you how you're able to do these things. And but you 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 have to have your experience. I think a lot of people are not blessed enough to be on on the big sets. Yep. See, they don't understand how it goes. Like here, you know, we're at a big studio today, Film yep. Ranch, yep. Uh, with my buddies and them here. Imagination. I mean, you know, that you can just imagine oh, what's insane. happening, right? And you have to continue to study. I spend a good five to six hours minimum on YouTube every single day, even after 20 years experiences. And even with all the credit that you see me that I have that I've accomplished, that is basically zero when I step into the studio that you saw. I am a student of the game that day. And every single day we've learned because you've seen what we've done the last four years and the growth of it. So it's just a matter of time before it breaks out, yeah. you know? So that's, that's dope, DOE, I can't yeah, wait, man. Yeah, man, it's gonna be an amazing movie. I mean, yeah, it's sensational. I mean, the passion that Sam has, your passion is incredible. Like this is not, you know, a lot of people make a movie because there's a monetary value to it or there's a story that they wanna tell. Like you said, the big budgets, there's a lot of money being spent. But here you're controlling it all. Like you, some of these scenes, and I'm not gonna spoil stuff, we're gonna let the documentary show that. I was blown away when you showed me where you shot some of this stuff. And when I saw the real footage, I was like, no way, no, it can't be. Yeah. And yeah. then you're like, look, here's the raw and here's the, you know, yeah. the, the proper color graded one. And I was like, fuck. Well, you know, you have to have the eyes for it. And I think yeah. that you develop that by doing your homework. You yeah. watch a lot of movies, you watch a lot of TV shows because your mind, your memory, it collects these images. Yeah. And then you got to figure out, okay, well, how do you get your film closer to that images which yeah. dictate a certain mood for yeah. the audience right yeah. and if you don't have a team of 200 people you have to learn it to do it by yourself and i find the enjoyment the excitement of that because with all my buddies including you their actors or their crew or my camera woman when i send them a screenshot they are in awe like what did we film i said exactly you didn't really know what it was yeah. We usually just roll up in the back of the alley of some shop and yeah, we're gonna yeah. roll, we're gonna film. And then when you see it, you're like, wait, this yeah. is how? And I think that that's what's gonna be so interesting for people when they see how we able to do this by, by pure creativity. And you know, one of my mentors, Robert Rodriguez, he's always told me, run out of creativity ideas. Don't start writing the checks from the checkbook. It doesn't solve your creativity. Yeah. You know, you got to run out of the creativity ideas before you start spending money because the money will continue to bleed and you still have not solved your problem. And that is my, you know, really inner thought all the time, how we get this done at the level that we're getting this done. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really good advice. But your passion, like I see how you drive, you know, how you push yourself. You've got the, you've got the passion, you've got the drive that's in you. That's not something that's being taught or someone's pushing you to do that, right? No, no, Because no. A, lot, a lot of projects, it's, you know, people are going to put big money in, you know, studios are going to put big money, so the pressure's on the director. But you're so passionate about this and such a, you know, with such limited um, assets that you have to deal with, 
it's incredible. I mean, this is like a big budget movie when people see the final thing. And then when they watch the documentary, they're going to be like, no way, you know, because this is, it's like going back in the kitchen and you know, you've ordered something really nice, like a beautiful cake. Yeah. Then you go in the kitchen, they show the ingredients, how it's made. And you're like, how? it can't be. By one man. Yeah, by one man, right? <laughs> right. And then everyone else who became an actor and then also helped out with the crew. I think yeah. that that's why we set out to do this. You know, I took the formula you know, Rebel with our crew, Robert Rodriguez, who has been my mentors, you know, and, and, and that's the idea is the Quentin Tarantino of the film is the Robert Rodriguez, where if you don't have it, how do you make it work? Yeah. And you have to learn how to make it work. Yeah. And I think that what you said, passion is what's going to get you over any hump that you're facing, any obstacle that you're facing. Yeah. And we've been fortunate and blessed enough to where you know, a lot of people, they laugh because they don't see the Mercedes, they don't see the, the BMWs, the Lexus when I roll up. Well, that's because the Mercedes and, and the Lexus and the BMW money is all in the equipment. Yeah. A to Z. We don't need zero. We need nothing from anyone outside. We can start with writing the script, lighting. We have grip. We have gaff. We have electric. We have lighting. We have camera. We have camera support. We have editing, we have post-production, we have ADR, looping studio, editing, color grading, you name it, to delivery. So we're, we're baking from A through Z. Full house, yeah. Yep. All, I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand you, the producer or the, or, or the distribution company, here's the cake. Yeah. You know, here's what we baked. And I think that that's gonna be the new age, what we're dealing with here, uh, because of the, the economy, because of everything that's going on. So I can't wait until all of you guys get to meet all of our producers uh, who are uh, in the film and also believe in it because it started with three, four people to believe. And that's when we came together as a group. And I'm going to tell you, I can't do this. Yes, I am the captain. I'm steering the ship. But I promise you, there's five people, core people on our team that believe from the beginning. So they helped me row the boat. Yeah. Okay. I can steer it, yeah, yeah. but I, these other people came on board and allowed me to have the vision to where I need to steer to. So I think that you guys will find out uh, when it's all said and done that these individuals are, you know, priceless. Yeah. You know, they're always going to be in my mind and my heart. And no matter where I go anywhere in the world, they're with us. Yeah. You know, I don't care what anybody else said, because one of the reasons why my passion is the way it is, you want to prove people wrong. You know, somebody make you mad. They don't yep. believe in you, right? Yep. You can be upset. You can be pissed off. But then what do you do about it? You, you can either be sour to the game and you can blame. Or you can take that chip on your shoulder and say, you know what, dude? Watch me. Yep. But use it in the creative way. Go do something about it and not just be mad and upset at the world. Because the world's going to be what it is going to be. Correct. It's right? not going to change. Yep. The passion comes from that chip on the shoulder, that Correct. critical self of mind go, you know what? You know how to do this. You're better than this. You can go do it. Do it and prove it to them and say, hey, you jump on board to begin, yeah. it's Walmart and Dollar Tree prices. Would you jump on later? You're paying premium. Giorgio Armani type yeah. prices, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But that's what it takes, right? I think that we all human beings, we go through these situations and scenarios and people would not believe in you. So you got to help yourself before somebody else will. You know, the same thing with you and all my other producers. When you saw what I was able to do with just, wait, it's just you and the gimbal. Yeah. And it's just, wait, what the heck's going on? Then it start intriguing to you. And then and, and you recognize, hey, there's talent here. There's passion here. There's work in progress and productivity here. Yeah. And that's how we're here. Yeah. Even 22, when I first, you, you sent me a little s screenshot of the, um, the Humvee going through the mountains. Yeah. And one was the cinematography and the color grading. Yeah. But the audio. Yeah. You don't hear this in a lot of these type of movies where they, they never get the audio right. Yes. And there's a disconnect, right? Yes. From my end, I want to visually watch it and I want to hear it too, right? Because then you're immersed in the actual movie. That's the reason you go to cinemas. Yes. It's a big screen. You've got massive speakers and you're, you know, for two hours, an hour and a half, you're tranquilized into yeah, that you're movie. You're on a journey. Yeah. yeah. I, independent films lack that because of resources and knowledge. Okay. Thank God uh, I came from the audio, audio world. I was a recording engineer, rap and R&B music producers. So I came from the audio world where I know where it should be yeah. and where the mix should be. So from producing music to mixing, that was my forte first. 
So I take that, I can immerse that into our footage and our film, and it makes you feel more, it dictates, it drives the yeah. emotion. Yes. And that's really the key. When, when you do an independent film, and sometimes it's just they don't have any resources, what do they do? But for me, it's like, okay, you can learn. Yep. This is YouTube Correct. University. Yeah, there's no excuses anymore, right? No. Yep. We have better resources than, than Quentin Tarantino, than, than Robert Rodriguez when they started out. So you have no excuses, right? You know, I give myself a five, 10 minute of like being fucking pissed off. Yep, yep. I'm human. Yep. But then you have to decide what do you do about it? Yeah. You, can either do, you can either do something about it or you don't. Yeah. You can fall flat or you can rise and say, you know what? I'm going to keep fighting. I think that that's where the fine line of everyone who wants to change their life. It's not just the movie, the TV business. It's just to change your life. Yep, so if you're not happy, I understand. But then you got to be mad. Yep. Allow yourself that, that time to be mad. Because I don't believe in these people who say, I wake up being motivated every day. That's BS. Yeah. We have our ups and downs, right? right? But what do you do about it? You yep. give yourself 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I go to the gym. I listen to some music. Then I plan my day. And then how do we attack it? And then because here's the thing. Guys like you and me, the team is relying on us. Yeah. It is our mood. It is our pace. It is our rhythm that they're going to ride with. So you have no heart, no rhythm, and no passion. They can't provide you any help. It starts with you. Your energy dictates everything. I, many times I have no sleep. I didn't get sleep last night. So, But how do you come when you come on set when it's time to play? How do you come to play? And I think that's the change and the difference of people who do this for money because the check is there no matter if they finish the day or not. For us, it's like, we can't. Yeah. Okay, you have something to prove. Yeah. You want to show the studio you can make a $20 million movie for less than a mil, or less than two, three mil. So you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. But that's a challenge. Yeah. That's the beauty and that's the yeah. love of it. Yeah. And the, hence, right behind that is the passion. No, it's, it's so true. And as I say, right, reasons are results. A lot of people got reasons, and then a lot of people just got results. Yeah. But you need that burning desire, like what you've said, right? It's got to be in you, or it's just driving you to succeed from that end. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, and you know, the uneducated from a movie point of view, they, they think that a lot of these movies are a couple hundred million, all of them. Yeah. So when you speak to people, even other producers I've spoken to that make movies for, let's say, $10 million and stuff, and when you tell them you can make something in a couple of million dollars, and the quality of this is, <laughs> beyond anything else, right? It's got to be seen, right? It's just, it's got to be watched and it's got to be seen. And this is just the start, right? Yeah. This is your second movie, right? And secondly, your name's on it. So to you, this is, you're here to prove yeah. what can be done, what's possible and what you're capable of. Right. You know, I've known you for about four years, coming up to five years now, and I met you on set for um, Kickboxer in Thailand when they were filming Kickboxer with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And, um, you know, you're a great actor and you know how you carry yourself on that but you've got the director part in you. You know, the skills and the talent and the vision that you have, what I've seen the last couple of days is like, wow. Well, I mean, I think that you, you witnessed the, um, the growth of yep. the last, you know, three and a half, four years and the growth continues. Uh, and it's because like, I will tell you, I take my five soldiers to any war. My five soldiers are like the 300 Spartans. I put them up against anyone and they're gonna fail because they don't have the work ethic like we do. We have nothing to lose. Yeah. And we come out from the corner swinging with creativity and with madness and with relentless pursuit for it, the tenacity that we go after it. And that's what makes it a difference instead of someone else say, hey, we're just gonna make a film. No, we set out to do this this way because of all the people that have been able to do it. You know, we watch Zack Snyder he filmed the scene for the Green Lantern yeah. uh, outside his garage. So I called my buddies up and said, hey, let's do a test shoot, see if we can do a badass rain shootout yeah. in front of the garage and do it like Zack Snyder. But you know what? You've seen it in the film. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see it in the film, you're like, wait a minute. They shot this at the house and they went and got all the face shots. Wet, two wet rats in the French Quarter. And when you see it, it looked like, no, they were in the French Quarter. And that's what the, 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 the beauty of proving to people is like, hey, you know what? This is the new day and age. And if you don't step up with this, then you get left behind. And I think that that's really the model that we have. It's like, hey, 
our team of five are the Spartans and we hold our ground and we do the best of the best of the work. Yeah. And, and that's what it takes. Yeah. Even one of the scenes, CJ is driving and um, that was shot in your driveway. <laughs> so Sam showed me this footage first and then he goes, that was shot outside. It's like, no way, can't be done. You know, and wait till you see it in the movie. And I think the documentary is very important too, because this is the, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. And the, that's the, the, that's the thing, right? I have, you know? I have my people, right? So yeah. they would turn the lights. Yeah, yeah. So then one shake the car. Yeah. <laughs> we have the little two by four underneath the car and it's shaking the car, but we match the lights with the footage. So a lot of this come from YouTube. Yeah, wow. Right? And so, but if you, if you, if you, if you can fool the eyes, that's all it is. Is that's the film. Is. You just fool the you eyes, and you give them the good music, the yep. feel, yep. and you, the way how you cut, the way you edit, the way you you color grade it. You give the audience this thrill, this thrill ride, and they forget that hey, you know, there could be you know some visual effects to it, right? Yep. But it's all about how you how you drive the audience and you give them what they're looking for, what they want. And then on the other side, you give them something that they might not even know that they were in for. Yeah. And I think that that's what DOE is about, is like giving you something that you did not know you were gonna be in for a ride. And I think that's really also the key, you know, like figuring out, okay, I love to do this. Well, you don't have $200,000 for that shot for that day. What do you do? Yes. That's the yes. basic foundation, the basic uh, common denominator. How do you do that? How do you accomplish that shoot? So we start reversing engineering. We start just going back, okay, how do, we do, how do you do this? How do you do that? And how do you make it work? And then everything that you see when the film comes and when the documentary, I think people are going to be blown away. Their mind's going to be blown because how? It's, it's, whether you're a producer or an audience member, you're going to go, wait, that is it? Yes, because what it is, is, you use your heart and your mind to get these things done. And that's really the key to, to this project and the documentary. Yeah, but you're very efficient, you know, especially from, you know, from a spending point of view, you're, you're really leveraging that dollar, you know, where a lot of other productions, I would assume, you know, they're, they're spending, so they've got a massive crew. Yeah. We don't need a massive crew, right? It's no. all about efficiency these days and mm. having talented people and the right people on set to do what they need to do. Right. There's no point of having a talent sitting in a trailer for the whole day when you only need 10 minutes of shooting. Right? I think that I, th I think that it comes with experience because we didn't have a crew. So I'm my first AD, second AD, <laughs> third AD if you had it, or second second. I'm the location manager. Uh, you name it, I am it. I'm the cinematographer. I operate the camera. I have a camera woman, wonderful to operate. A lot yeah. of time, the lead actress is is the one who who operate the cameras, and so. We just, as a team, we are like ants. We just yeah. go in and we do the work. And that's really what's excited about this project is that no one else can see that you can actually do this. Uh, but everybody's hands are, are in the, 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 the cooking uh, in the back, you know, when we, when we make this. So I think that when it's all said and done, holy moly cow, I oh, think yeah. you guys are going to be in for a treat. Yeah, even the studios like Netflix, Amazon, you know, yeah. they're, they're just going to be blown away because they're so used to spending so much more and you can do this with such a lower budget and create such a, you know, incredible project. You, you know? just have to have a vision, a set of yeah. eyes on what it is that you're looking for. I think that a lot of the studio, they spend X amount of dollar yep. above the line and then the rest of the line, they just get someone that maybe do enough to handle it and then just turn the movie to make sure they're complete. But, you know, it's like you go get... Hugh Jackman, yeah, but then you go get a director they can't deliver on the level of Hugh Jackman's performances yeah. Yeah. and ability. Yeah. That's where you have the disconnect. Is that you spend the money, you know, twenty thirty million dollar for Denzel Washington, yeah. but if you don't spend the money decently enough for the director who knows how 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 he ticks yeah. and what he does, how to leverage it, right? Yeah. So then you don't have the magic sauce, yeah. right? You just have a guy that just kind of like, okay, move along. Yeah. And and they just get the job done okay. But then when you go into the film and you look at the film, you're like, wait a minute, this was 10 million? Where did the 10 million go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the difference to me. I feel like the the formula that they have been doing is, is where they making their mistake. It used to work. Yep. yep. But after COVID and after streaming wars and no yep. more theaters, it doesn't work anymore. So when, when a distribution company asked me, you know, there's no star cast. I'm like, well, your star cast didn't bring you back to 10 million. So what's the point of you spending Correct. 5 million on cast above the line yep. when you can't get that back? Yep. You're losing money. There's no point of doing it. Yep. That's why you see these studios are going out of business. 
And these studios that are making, you know, hundreds of movies. And I mean, they've been nominated for, you know, 80 times. They won 20 Academy Awards, but they go on bankrupt. They go out of business because the new model, the new day and age will come in. That's it. You know, you had the old blockbuster. And when Netflix came on board, nobody believed it. Yeah. But then now Netflix is near the blockbuster point. There's going to be the smaller kids who's coming up. And they have to be able to deal with that. Yeah. And I think a lot of the smaller studios, there's no more mid-budget level, you know, 40 million, you know, even the low one, 20, 25 million. They don't get their money back. So you have to understand the game of it, right? Yeah. A lot of directors, they're great when it comes to creativity. Yep. But they want to make these grandioso type yep. of films yep. and they go, don't get the money back. You know, I've always been taught anything after seven million, you're going to have a hell of a time to get that money back. For sure, yeah. Because you got to put that same 10 million on the film, the 10 million on the on the, the marketing. marketing. Yep. Right? So now you're 20 million, 20 million in a hole. So how are you going to get that 20 million back when the theater's already taken half what you earned? That's right. And they're closing down, right? right. So you've lost that audience or you're losing that audience. So the math is you got to do yep. 40, yep. right? And you get 20 just to break even on what you spend on the 20. And there's no more of that because, you know, people don't go to theaters. Yep. Then you buy the DVDs collection. Yep, correct. And then finally you rent it. Yep. And then finally you get the same for free. There's no more of those stuff. You literally can go to the theater and go back home and be like, Hey, I can rent that movie right now. Yeah, yeah. For six ninety nine. Yeah. Go to the theater is fifty bucks for a date, hundred bucks for a date. Yeah. Time has changed, and if we don't learn how to change with time, then you know you're just gonna be you know perishable. So true. And I think that that's that's the new message of what is happening. It's not just me. It's not just us. The the studios recognize it. Yeah. You know the the, the audiences say, hey, why are there so many bad content? that you just scroll on all the time. You never find a project to see, yeah. you know? There's so, but yeah, I mean, I think that we're in the new era. Yeah, but there's less and less, in my opinion, there's less and less good quality blockbuster movies coming out. You know, it, like you said, the quality is not there as like it used to be. You know, there's big budget, you know, they're guaranteed, they're really good movies. Some good stuff out there, but not great how it used to be, you know? The way they, the way they pencil the deals together, right? Uh, they used to be pencil together by People who love films. Yeah. Now passion. it's just the bottom lines and numbers. Yeah, well, no and you anymore. grab superstar A, superstar B, you put them together and you think, go, oh, this person wrote the script. Go in. Just grab whatever director, make it work. Yeah. You don't have chemistry. Yeah, you can't do that. Right? They don't gel. And so now you don't have a complete project. You know, you can take the salt, you can take the yeah. pepper, but it's two separate <laughs> places, <laughs> that's, right? That's right. So that's why you don't yeah. have the, the content quality that you had before is the people who making the deals, the same people who I talk to yep. daily, yep. they don't understand there's the new day and age and they're pencil pushers. So they only understand these numbers. So they don't understand when the numbers don't add up. Yep. You're not, you don't have boots on the ground. You don't yep. understand what the yep. audience is Correct. looking for. Yep. Yep. You know, so the audience is smarter. They've watched MMA the last 20 years. They know when it's fake, when it's real. Yep. So you got to give them something that they're looking for, what they want. And, you know, sometimes not what they expected, but on the bigger level. Yeah. And I think that this is the era that we, we're, we're stepping into. This is the future. Yeah. Um, this is not even including what we're dealing with with AI. Yeah. You know, and I think that you got to jump on board. You got to be with the game because if you don't, then you're going to get left behind Correct. like everybody else. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't know, and I've been fortunate to be on some movie sets, that the actors, they're pretty much props for lack of a better word, right? Yeah. Well, you know, they're part of the team. They're part yep. of they're part of the whole big chessboard. Yep. And I think you have to know how to move them accordingly to Correct. maximize what it is they bring to the table. Yep. And if you don't really know how they tick and how they work, uh, then you're not really be able to maximize what's going on with them. And you have to know that. And that's part of your, your, your as a director, as a producer, as a creator, Correct. you have to understand their work and you have to respect their work and what they've been through. And, and, and really nurture that, you know, because actors are very emotional creatures. Yeah. And, and so you have to handle that with care. And I think actors, for the most part, they love the fact that if you care about what they're going through and what's happening within themselves, and if you understand that part, right, then you have an easier time. If you understand human psychology, you have an easier time to direct any actors. Yeah. Because you can recognize what it is yeah, that's, yeah. that's pushing them, yeah. what it is it that's holding them back. That's right, and then you have to understand that it's psychologically one on one. If you don't understand psychology, you better pick up psychology one on one. Yeah, and start yeah. understanding that. Yeah, so true. That's why you can get some really good actors, which they're really good, 
but with the wrong director or the wrong team, wrong production, it's not good. And then some of these movies, you know, we know these actors. Yeah. You watch, you know, they've been superstars, but now you're looking at them going, why would you do this movie? Like, this, you're not leveraging the talent or their angles or, you know, well, the strengths. Uh, it's, because, it's because they have the person that do not know how to manage these stars. I mean, yeah. and that's the difference. That's why you see these directors who continue to do the films and the quality of the film that they do yeah. is because they understand the process. They understand the, the human psychology. And that's why you have the A-lister who always work with certain directors because they understand each other. Yeah. They, yeah. You have to the understand, there. Right? Yep. you know, if yep. you don't understand the person that you're working for, because this person has to trust you with all of their emotions, all of their bullshit. And you're behind the camera and you're watching all their dirty work through their eyes. You're seeing their soul. They're bearing their soul for you. So if you, as an actor, if you don't trust that director behind the camera, you won't bear that soul. There won't be a connection. And that's where you see most stuff. You're like, what? but I just saw him this. And he was so amazing. And I looked at this, I'm like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's where we come in. We are the little guys who understand that process and can maximize that yeah. if you understand the psychology part of it. Yeah, that's so true. Now with Doe, so what, one of the things that we want to do is we're going to cut the little trailer in there as well so people can get a good idea of what it looks like. Yeah. So, you know, talking them through, I want them to get a visual you know, get a couple of clips and get a bit of audio in there and really understand what this project's going to look like before they see the, the release when it does come out. But a lot of people think that movie making, feature films, it's quick because they're, they're only <laughs> seen an hour, right? So an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it might be. Yeah. You think, oh, it's a couple of people running around with cameras and it takes a couple of hours to film or a week to film. Can you just take us through the, the, the amount of work that's involved and the time it takes to create something? You know, you they have a term, the film is in the can. That's only maybe 10% of it. So if you shoot three weeks, two months, six months, that's just part of it. The rest of the next year or two or even three years is the post-production. Okay. And the post-production take longer because I can shorten up the scene by three frames or add three frames. It will take you out of it. And I have to sit there countlessly, watch it to make sure how it feels, and then have the other audience come in, the test audience come in to see how they feel. So there's a process of it, right? And you don't just slap things together and then all of a sudden, yeah, that's the movie. No, it's not. You know, there are many times when they go back to reshoot, they go back and they recut, re-edit, they add scenes because it doesn't feel like it should be. So all of these things behind the scene where eventually when you have a picture lock, that's one thing. And then you go on to color grading, color correction, the sound design, and then you do the dubbing, the dialogue, the ADR, the looping, and then the editing, and then with, with the color grading, the mixing, right? And then all of that come together. Usually it's, it's a two year process yeah, wow. before you see every mix cracks, everything on all your surround sound. It's, it's a decent, you know, 18 months, 24 months, two years minimum. Yeah, it's a and work. this is what we have here. You know, it's been a two year journey, but when you see it, it doesn't seem like it. And you see the production value and what we bring to the table. It's incredible because it doesn't matter how long we really took or you know how short of a time. All it all that matters is what you see on screen. And we take every penny that we have and we put it on screen. And and we don't spare expenses on screen. And I think that that's the difference between this independent film, yeah. you know, versus other blockbuster. I mean, John Wick was supposed to go straight to video, you know. Yeah, wow. And then now you look at it as a billion dollar over a billion dollar franchise, you know. So I think that when you put in this kind of work people will eventually, they will yeah. come on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so true. No, really well said. Now you've got proper equipment as well. Like you've got black magic cameras and all your auto, um, editing studio and ADR, you've got all that stuff. So it's, you've got all the tools, right? You've got oh, the yeah. great tools. Oh you know, yeah, I mean, not, we have it. Listen, yeah. we, don't need, we don't need to rent anything. You rent the equipment for two to three films, you might as well buy it, Yeah. right? So we buy everything from A through Z. Uh, I've been with Black Magic cameras since 2012. Grant Petty. Grant, you if you're listening, you better be watching this and, um, you know. You should be sponsoring yeah. us yeah. for these next films, right? We have eight Black Magic cameras. Wow. So when people see the montage for the distribution companies, they ask me, what did you shoot it on? Yeah. <laughs> so they were expecting an Ari. Yeah. They're expecting, you know, Red Dragon. Yep. And I tell them, it's black magic cameras. And you see it for a fraction of a second. 
you see it, there's a, wait, what? No. Yeah. I say, well, the thing is, with the color grading, with the Vinci Resolver, everything that we can do, we make it so cinematic with the music, you you immerse in the experience. Um, only geeks and nerds like us says, you know, that roll off on that right side of that actor is not really where it should be. Yeah. And on, on our way, it should be better. Yeah. All these members do not know that. Yeah. They want a good experience. Right. They would not know the difference between the roll off and the highlights. They don't care. They want a good story. They want yep. good action. They want good editing, pacing, and you keep them guessing. That's what they want. They want in and out. They don't yep. want a drawn out three, four hour film. You don't have to explain everything. Yep. And that's the difference what we've been able to do. Uh, we went to make deals with, with you know, the Hanser, uh, which is a film emulation film. We went to make deal with um, Action VFX for all the VFX assets. Uh, we went to the, uh, you know, action training production, uh, uh, an amazing stunt action school for performers in, 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 in France. I mean, we make deals with everybody. We have deals with um, uh, Bulletproof Everyone, yeah, who's in the film that's a, you know, a sponsor yeah. with, with the things that we wear. And so these are the things that you have to do as a personal producer, independent producer to go out there and make it work. You know, The job is the producer. You go out and you produce. Yeah. Do you produce with the money, investment, with talent, with, with, with names, with brands? You name it, that's what we have to do. Yeah. And you know, when someone, you know, call themselves a producer, you gotta make sure you go out there and produce. Cause if you don't, then you just want the title. Yeah, correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but the real job of it is completely different. And I enjoy every part of it, honestly, because it teaches you something about yourself. Yeah. It teaches you when you don't have nothing and when you are at the bottom, at the lowest, how do you dig yourself out? How do you claw yourself out? How do you continue when no one is applauding for you? How do you continue? How do you get up every day when there's no paycheck waiting for you that Friday? How do you keep going? And that's the key. That's the difference between having a passion, becoming a filmmaker, or, or having a passion to do anything in life. You know, it's not just filmmaker. It's not just TV and films. It's not being an actor or director and producer. It's life, right? One of my biggest mentors he saved my life honestly i listen to jocko willink yep. every morning you better get your ass up when you listen to jocko yeah. you're gonna go you're gonna do what you need to do right and, and 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 that's the discipline that when i'm down and out i would just listen to jocko and and it, you know it's a different scene and then the gym you know what i'm saying really that's what get you above and beyond to go do it yeah, I mean, I think that I'm so excited for this journey that we're all going to come and experience, man. This is the new day and age. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's rock this. This is a game changer. This changes everything. Yes, I mean, especially will. though, this changes everything. From what I've seen, you know, since we started the project in the last couple of days, being here physically you yeah. know, in Louisiana, New yeah. Orleans and the studio sets and everything else. Wow. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, you know, wow. You saw some of the stuff from the timeline yeah, that yeah. we normally don't leak it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. We pretty much... I go to you, I drive yeah. to LA for people to see it, or you come to the studio and you see what's being done, you know, post-production. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, that's, that's incredible. let's rock this. I'm gonna add a link on the video below in the description as well. So anybody that wants to get involved, that believes in, you know, that wants to help on the next projects or any way, shape or form or sponsors or anything like that, people that wanna get involved, um, we're gonna put a link down below so they can contact us as well, so they can reach out. Sure. And also will um, the people that have helped with the project as well. So a lot of these brands and companies will link them as well. So we can give them some credit as well. And as a thank you to them as well. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Yeah. And what we have is that we always have, you know, if business have, they want to have their brand, brand integration product, you know, placement in the film, we have those opportunities. Yeah. And it's a very small promotional fee for them, but it's going to be seen all over the world. And it's cheaper than you doing your own commercial because oh, yeah. you got to hire a guy like me to do your commercial. Yeah. And then you have to spy, buy the, the, the spots for the commercial. Yeah. But if you do, that's why a lot of companies do, you know, brand integration, you know, yeah. product placement because the people see your brand and, and, and so you don't have to go shoot a commercial. It's immersed in the people's mind. Yeah. And that's why at the beginning of the film, you always see them wanting you to go get Coke and popcorn. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. the deal is. And so it's less expensive for you to do that, to promote your brand. So yeah, we'll, we have opportunities for anyone who come who wants to come on board and and, and you know contribute, yeah. but uh, be on this journey of of changing the game, yeah. you know, uh, changing the game to where the independent filmmakers and producer 
are going to change the game for the next 5, 10, 20 years. Yeah, no, excellent. No, I really appreciate it, Sam. Thank you for doing this and, um, you know, thank you for the opportunity to share your story and, um, you know, this is this is the baseline, you know? This, oh, yeah. This is just before the rocket ship takes off, right? Oh, no doubt, man. No, we, we appreciate you believing from yep. the beginning. Thank you for being here. I mean, he flew all the way from Australia, went to L.A., come here. He's going to New York, back to L.A. And, uh, yeah, this is exciting time. I think it's exciting time because you're willing to make it exciting. Yeah. I think that's the key, right? You have to make it exciting uh, because people are waiting on your energy. So, yeah. Let's let's rock this and let's continue this and we can't wait till you guys see the movie and, and the documentary. Yeah, done. Appreciate it, Sam. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure, brother. Cool. Well, sure. I hope that there will not be a problem. There are news. Everything is over.